now let us discuss about iterative deepening search in short we can call it as ids i stands for iterative d stands for deepening s stands for search algorithm or this can also be called as iterative deepening depth of search algorithm okay uh, first let us see the advantage of ids algorithm iterative deepening search algorithm is mainly useful in order to overcome the drawback of depth limited search algorithm the major drawback of depth limited search algorithm is in this algorithm we will maintain a predetermined depth limit we will maintain a predetermined depth limit depth limit suppose if the goal node is beyond the depth limit then it is incomplete it doesn't produces the solution let the goal node is available at depth 3 whereas predetermined depth limit depth limit is set as 2 so now what will happen the predetermined depth limit is greater than the predetermined depth limit is less than the depth depth of the tree is 3 the goal load is available at 3 whereas we are going to search the tree up to 2 only so it is incomplete it doesn't produce the solution so in order to overcome this problem we are going to use iterative deepening search algorithm so let us see the important points and after that we will see with the help of an example okay it is uninformed search technique so just like breadth of a search depth of a search depth limited search ids algorithm is also a uninformed search algorithm so we know about uninformed search algorithm domain knowledge is not needed as well as heuristic functions are not needed so it doesn't uses any additional information about the goal state okay so next point it is a combination of breadth of a search and depth of a search so ids algorithm means we need to use both bfs as well as dfs so that means it combines the benefits of bfs and dfs so ids algorithm means we will use the benefits of bfs breadth of a search as well as depth of a search algorithm so let's see the benefits of the bfs we know that the benefits of bfs are it is complete why because in bfs at each level we have to search all the nodes so if the tree contains 100 nodes then we are going to search all the 100 nodes we are going to traverse all the 100 nodes until the goal node is found so we can say that BFS is complete. It gives 100% guarantee about the goal load. And BFS algorithm is optimal. So when we have solution in multiple paths, then BFS algorithm always produces the shortest path for the corresponding goal load. So like BFS, iterative deepening search algorithm is also complete and optimal. So it also here also we will search all the nodes until we will get the goal node as well as it also gives the best path when we have when we have goal node in multiple paths. Next let's see the benefits of DFS. The benefits of DFS are memory efficient. Memory efficient. Why? Because IDS algorithm means simply we will follow DFS only. So we know about DFS. DFS means we will set the we will search for the goal node in one path suppose if the goal node is not available in that path then we have to do the backtracking and we need to search in the another path so there is no need to store all the nodes in the tree simply initially we will store the nodes of one path only so the memory is efficient less memory is required why because instead of storing all the nodes in the tree we will store the nodes in a one path only. Suppose if the solution is not found in that path, then we will do the backtracking 
and the remaining uh, path nodes will also be stored okay so compared to the bfs it is very very memory efficient okay less memory is required and as well as it is very very faster why because if the solution is found in the first path only then we will get the solution directly so it is very very faster we require less amount of time so like bfs ids algorithm is complete and optimal like dfs it is ids algorithm is memory efficient and fast so these four are the advantages are benefits of the ids algorithm okay next uh, this algorithm finds the best lim best depth limit so the major advantage of the ids algorithm is in this algorithm we are going to find the best depth limit so let's see how it will be done it does this by gradually increasing the depth limit so initially uh, the depth of the, the depth will be considered as zero so first zero if the go load is not found yet depth zero then we will search at level one suppose if the go node if the go node is not found yet depth limit one then we will set it as two suppose if the go load is not found yet second depth then we will set depth as three so likewise the process will be continued until the go load is found okay and so on until the go load is found let us assume that in this example g is the go load g is the go load so initially what will happen is in the first iteration that the yeah so this is level 0 next this is level 1 this is level 2 so in iteration 1 what will happen is only this level 0 depth 0 will be considered so only a will be traversed let us assume that a is not the goal load here what is the goal load assumes that g is, g is the goal load so here a is not the goal load then we will keep depth as 1 so depth will be increased so now in the iteration 2 what will happen up to depth 1 up to depth 1 dfs will be done okay so we know about dfs dfs means path traversal here this is nothing but dfs algorithm only but according to the depth we will continue so first depth will be considered as 0 if the solution is not found in the if the goal load is not found in the depth 0 then the depth will be considered as 1 if the goal load is not found at depth 1 then it is considered as 2 likewise the process will be continued so depth of set means the traversing will be done in one path so first a will be traversed next in this path b will be traversed next there is no need to traverse the remaining nodes why because in the second iteration we are assuming depth as 1 so next back traversal okay back traversal so this c will be traversed so the output is a b c so now the goal load is found so what will happen now the next iteration will be done so now depth will be increased to so previously depth is 1 so now depth will be increased to 2 so we know about dfs traversal so first what will happen in this way the goal load will be searched so what is the traversal a b d so next what will happen backtracking e next what will happen backtracking so a b d next there are no uh, siblings of uh, there are no children of d so do the backtracking so unexplored children of b is e so e will be traversed next there are no children of e so backtracking there are no unexplored children of b so do the backtracking so the unexplored children of a is c c next is traverse in this way f next do the backtracking g so here what is the goal load g is the goal load so we got the goal load so we can stop the process now so here the depth is 2 so according to the problem requirement we have to increase the depth so this is the advantage of this approach whereas if we take the previous one that is uh, which algorithm depth limited search there we will assume a predetermined depth limit suppose if the goal load is not found there then it is incomplete whereas here that problem won't arise 
If the goal load is not found at second depth, then we will increase the depth. In the next level, we will search. So likewise, the process will be continued. So this is about iterative deepening search algorithm or iterative deepening DFS algorithm. Here, the time complexity of this approach is iterative deepening search is big O of B power D. So we know about B. So B is nothing but branching factor. So branching factor means how many childs does a parent have? So if you take A, A has two children. B has two children. C has two children. So here any node has two children. So the branching factor is two. Whereas D means that depth. That depth. So that is D value. So this is the time complexity of this algorithm. So this is about idea algorithm. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel as well as share the channel with your friends. Thanks for